Good morning. Wednesday. Halfway through the week. It's about time. All right. So, we've had our Monday game predictions. We've had our Monday game recap. Now, we're back on to our random talks. Um, this morning, another topic that was requested by one of my viewers. I know there aren't that many of you yet, but maybe one day there will be, who knows. How much should you lead your players? Now, this has kind of got me thinking a bit because it lends itself to talking about styles of game. Um, which, in our kind of modern consciousness, almost lends itself towards talking about video games, MMOs especially. Um, so I will use a couple terms that, uh, that cross over into MMO territory. And the main terms that I'm going to mention here are a sandbox game versus a linear game. And that's kind of the question that you're asking when you ask how much you should lead your players in D&D. And the answer is that both types of games do work if run correctly. It is possible to run a fairly linear, story-driven campaign that doesn't actually give the players that many choices. It, it can be done. Yeah, it's, it is very possible to run a game that is very much, you go here, you get this, you take it there, you do that. Um, and with the right narrative elements and the right drive, you can have a very interesting game like that. Um, to one extent or another, most of the modules published by Dungeons and Dragons themselves are exactly that. Yeah, there might be a few small choices here and there. Um, for example, Storm King's Thunder. Um, there comes a point where you can pick one of these four places to go to, but whichever one of the four you go to, it then still leads you to the next place that's the same, because you'll get the same information at any of those four. So. Um, that kind of plays into it as well, because if you are going to run a linear game, do you want your players to know it's linear, or do you want to give them the illusion of choice? So really, that's almost getting into a third game type. So you have a linear game, you have a linear game with the illusion of choice, or you have a sandbox. Obviously, a sandbox, what we're referring to is a game that is, is open world and the players go wherever they want and they kind of set the direction of the game uh, without too much guidance from the GM. Yeah, there might be a quest line to undertake over here or a different quest line to take over there or uh, something interesting to look into over in that area. Um, but you present them all of these options and then they choose what direction they're heading. Now, each of these game types presents different challenges to the DM. I would probably say that most DMs that start running the game start out running linear games. They write a story and they want the players to play through that story and 
they don't really provide that many options for the characters to go off the rails. <coughs> and I'm trying not to say that's a bad thing because it's where we all start. It's the place that we're all familiar with. We're trying to duplicate the story in one of the fantasy novels that we've read as a kid, or we're trying to replay the heroic journey of the Lord of the Rings. I've seen every one, every incarnation of it. Um, and I understand, that's it's a familiar crutch for a DM that doesn't know any better, or that hasn't had the experience to walk without that yet. So, it's not a bad DMing choice. To me, it represents an immature DMing choice. And I don't mean immature as a person, I mean someone who is immature as a DM. Someone who has not had enough time as a DM, has not matured enough as a DM to take the step outside of that comfort zone. Um, now that type of game is much easier to run. And if you get the story elements right, your characters will still likely enjoy it. Not saying they won't. Especially if you have newer players. Because if you're a newer DM with newer players, they're still in that same phase you are. And it's really cool to just run through that heroic story and kill the bad guys and get the loot and rescue someone at the end and be a hero. It's nice. Until you've run that same scenario 20 times. Then it starts getting boring. The danger that you run into then is not a new DM with new players, but it's a new DM trying to DM for old players. Because at some point, players become jaded of the traditional heroic story. And often you can tell this with the characters that they will start to play. They'll play characters that don't sound like a hero. Or players with a tragic flaw that limits their ability to be a hero, even if they want to be one. Um, I've mentioned one of the characters that I'm currently playing at the moment, and I didn't think about it when I created him. That's part of the danger as well. Uh, but he's like that. He... Sindrik is a character who wants to be a hero, but he has a tragic flaw that is beginning to make that very difficult for him. And... In a lot of ways, it is driving actions in the campaign that had I just built him the same character, but without that one flaw, the campaign might be going in a very different way. But because I built him with that flaw, it has shifted the path of the campaign ever so slightly. And that's where the danger of having an old player and a new DM comes in not saying that the DM I'm playing with is new. I'm saying if he was, this would be a danger. Um, because if you are a new DM and you have a storyline and one of your players derails that storyline and you don't know how to react to it, you don't know how to improvise, which most new DMs, that's where they fail, you fall apart. 
you lose the thread of the story. You don't know how to get them back on track. And you panic. And the number of DMs that I have seen break and games end because a player did something that the DM never considered they might have done and they could not fix their story. It's unfortunate because it does mean that in the long run it puts some people off DMing and they never really get a chance to grow into it. So, if a DM's watching this who's ever been broken by a player, on behalf of all of us, I do apologize. It's not intentional. It comes from a boredom or an apathy that many of us don't even realize we have towards the fact that we have run the traditional story a thousand times. Maybe not a thousand. Maybe five hundred. Who knows. But at some point in D&D, and if you haven't reached it yet, if you're sitting there saying, oh no, that's not true, you haven't played long enough yet. You will get there. You will get to the point that the traditional hero is boring. You will get to the point that the traditional saving the town is, oh, okay, we're doing that again this week. Oh, look, we're wiping out a goblin nest. Oh, look, we're defeating an orc horde. Yay. And you get to the point that the game becomes... an exploration of something else, something different. Um, and this is where I've mentioned previously where you start to explore your characters and you start to try to... Uh, a bit of a tight squeeze there. You start to try to build characters that the character gives you something to explore. The reason that you start to do that is that you can't guarantee that the DM's campaign will offer you something new. But if you build something into your character which gives you something new, then you can explore that character even if you're in a campaign that is boring. To you. It may not be boring to others, but it may be to you. It may be that you've seen the campaign before. Um, one of the worst feelings to me used to be whenever I would sit down at a gaming table and start to play a game, and 20 minutes into the game, I'm looking at it going, okay, yeah, this is module S1. And knowing that I've run that module a dozen times, that I know every twist and turn in the module, and that I'm not going to be surprised by any of the secret doors, and that I know where every trap is, and yeah. In that situation, sometimes it's hard to not take the game off the rails. To not walk up to the mayor of the town and for this specific instance, if the DM that I was playing in this game with is watching this, I do greatly apologize because I know what I did and it was not right. Um, but in a specific instance, we were playing the Village of Hamlet. I had run the Village of Hamlet however many times. And there's a certain person in the Village of Hamlet that is supposed to give you kind of the key quest 
that leads you off into the dungeons. And I tried to rob him before he could speak. And when he caught me and tried to stop me, I killed him. Oops. And the DM didn't know what to do. And at that point, we were sat in the village at the tavern, having disposed of the body of his NPC, and he didn't know how to get us to the dungeon. Because the guy that had the clue to the dungeon was buried in the woods. And it was purely and simply because I wanted to change the story. I wanted to get the game to a point that I didn't know what was about to happen. So I purposely went off script. And yeah, the game ended up breaking up after about two sessions of us wandering around the town doing nothing because the guy was a fairly new DM and just couldn't cope with it not being what it said in the book. And that is the danger of a game on rails. Is that you will get a player who will realize the game is on rails and will make it their game to take the game off the rails. That's the problem with a lead game. Now, that's not to say that a sandbox game doesn't have its own difficulties. A sandbox game is much harder to run. It requires a much higher degree of improv. It requires you to keep track of a lot more moving parts. This is why I said most new DMs don't start with this kind of a game. I mean, my Monday game. I'll start with that one because it is the worst example of dealing with a sandbox game. The game is set in the Spelljammer universe. The crew have a ship and are traveling through doing multiple things. Um, we are now about a year and a half into the game, game time wise. About seven months into the game, um, real time wise. We've had a few time lapses and with Spelljammer you have a lot of, you travel for 14 days to get the next spheres, spheres so um, time has passed. Um, it's a sandbox. They have their own ship. They can go wherever they want. The game started out with two leads into which direction they might want to go. They went one way and then got there and looped back and went the other way. Um, but the thing about it is Wherever they go, I will try to prevent, uh, present two or three storylines. And it is up to the players to figure out if people that they're talking to are involved in one story or another story or um, a completely different story that they haven't even uncovered yet. They have to work out who's who and then they have to figure out which one of those paths they want to take now what this means is that there are a lot of storylines which I've written which will never come to pass there are NPCs that I've statted that they will never meet because they went a different direction and in some cases, they've gone directions that I didn't have anything written for. At which point, you have to just improvise. You wing it. And 
it's worse than Spelljammer because they're at the level now where they can actually plane shift and travel between spheres in a moment. And the player can just look at you and say, um, yeah, I want to go to an uninhabited sphere. And I need to then be able to pull an uninhabited sphere out of my ass. Because I wasn't expecting him to go to an uninhabited sphere this week. I might have a few notes on a few spheres in general. I can browse through them and say, okay, yeah, that one's uninhabited, so we'll go there. But not always. They might list out a set of specifications that you don't have a sphere for. And then you've got to just create one. And the secret there is not to let them know you're creating it. It's to let them think that you had already prepared it in advance. That, that's, that's where the skill comes in. Um, but that, kind, that game, like I said, has a lot of moving parts. There are no less than 12 different agencies keeping tabs on the players. So as time passes for the players, time has to pass for those agencies. Um, there are at least six villains that they've pissed off um, who will, if possible, interfere with their plans. There are numerous NPCs that they've influenced and I need to keep rolling those NPCs' plans forward as well because at some point they might interact again. Oh, excuse me. It's been a long week already. Most of them are long weeks. Um, but yeah, I have to keep rolling those NPC stories because six months down the line, they might say, I want to look up so-and-so again and, and plane shift back to go, go see how he's doing. Okay, well, I need to know what he's been doing for the last six months. So, I have a timeline. And unfortunately, I can't really share it on this channel because some of my players watch this. And it would spoil the entire game if they saw it. Um, maybe one day, six months down the line or something, I'll come back and add it in. Um, so check the links. Who knows? Maybe it's there now. I don't know. Um, but I have a document that lists out every major NPC, every major villain, every major uh, influence on the game, and then it rolls it through month by month. What are they doing? Day by day, in some cases, where are they on certain days? Um... And I try to keep that chart updated for at least a year ahead of where the characters are. The reason I say a year in this game is because, like I said, time passes. You're traveling from sphere A to sphere B. It's going to take you three months. And they might do that a couple times within a session, so they might blow six months out. Um... That does mean that I need to make sure I know what the others are all doing. And it might be that they run into one of these people. I have set specific days that they are specific places. So if the players decide to go to that place on that day, they'll meet. So it takes a lot more management to run a believable sandbox. Right, well, I've rambled for a long time today and I am almost to the office. So, um, yeah, there we are. Linear games versus sandbox games. How much to lead your players, how much to keep the game on rails or off the rails. Um, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll see you guys tomorrow.